Hello everyone and thanks for being here. I know it's late in the day. Um, I'm PJ and uh, I'm going to discuss trash separation and recycling. So, um, solid waste management has and always will be a global concern. Um, in 2012, the EPA estimated 135 million tons of municipal solid waste entered our landfills. That's about 54% of our waste entering the ground with a recycling rate of 34%. Um, for comparison, <coughs> Sweden has a recycling rate of about 50% with only 2% of their trash entering the ground. In 1989, the EPA developed a solid waste uh, management hierarchy which has landfilling as the least desired method of uh, getting rid of your waste. Um, they also announced that, they also stated that the amount of new landfills have been decreasing um, but the pre-existing ones are still expanding. So just because we have the space to do so doesn't mean that we should. So I'm interested in uh, solid waste management because I think sustainable practices should be implemented anywhere where they could be deemed feasible. Um, in addition, it's a global issue and the United States is a big uh, contributor to this. And uh, the EPA's hierarchy for solid waste management is being used in the reverse order in the sense that we typically uh, landfill first, and then we'll combust our trash for electricity in areas where we can't landfill, and then after that we will recycle and do source reduction. Um, Shenandoah County, like many counties, um, relies prim primarily on landfilling to get rid of their waste. And uh, fortunately, I was approached by Daryl Bates, my client, who's a uh, Shenandoah County member and an entrepreneur who has an idea to implement a materials recovery facility um, or an MRF at the Shenandoah landfill. And hopefully with the success of this project, um, other counties will follow. So the Shenandoah County landfill, um, they're expanding. Their phases one and two were said to be full by 2016, and they've already um, had a $3 million expansion, which is said to last five to 10 years. Uh, in addition, they've allotted 61 acres for expansion, uh, which will, uncover, will cover needs until 2067. And you can see, um, this is Harrisonburg, and this is the approximate location of the uh, landfill in Shenandoah County. And on this side, um, this is the acres, the acreage that is allotted for expansion. So before we go into any issues with landfills, it's important to understand some general uh, anatomy of a landfill. So here we have a cross section of your typical landfill. Um, I know there's a lot of words on the screen, but ignore those for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> so we have an open, this is an open cell right here where trash and waste is going to be deposited uh, daily. And just underneath that is a liner, which is a semi-impermeable liner, which could be um, a combination of natural and man-made uh, <coughs> materials. And that's there to prevent um, leachate from penetrating nearby groundwater. And leachate is the, um, it's a byproduct, a liquid byproduct of the decomposing material in the landfill. In addition, we have uh, gas collection wells, which are collecting methane, um, which are also preventing those from entering uh, the nearby environment. And most importantly, on either side, you see on this side and on over here, those are uh, monitoring wells, once again, to ensure that um, no leachate or gas is entering the environment. So general issues um, with landfills, we have a more simplified version. You can see here's the liner and some monitoring wells. Um, so most problems with landfills arise after cells or landfills have been closed. Um, improper collection of methane gas um, and improper monitoring of leachate can result in methane and uh, leachate entering the nearby uh, environment, such as the groundwater or the air. And um, if they're going to be expanding, these be can become uh, more important issues further down the line. So Shenandoah <coughs> County Landfill currently receives 100 165 tons of waste per day, um, which equates to about 45% municipal solid waste, 45% construction debris, and 10% yard waste. Um, the way the program works now, they have uh, a series of 14 citizen convenience sites, which are located on this graph, indicated on this graph, uh, image rather, and uh, it requires the citizen to go to each site with their recyclables and place um, their plastic ones in this location, plastic twos here, their papers, their cardboard, Etc. Um, this could be confusing for some people, and if materials are placed in the improper bins, um, there could be problems further down the line. It's also important to notice that the county is currently okay with the operation of their landfill and the system that they're currently using uh, to recycle. 
So instead of using a landfill, another option is a materials recovery facility, or an MRF. Um, so at MRFs, they separate materials both manual, uh, manually, mechanically, and using high-tech sensors. Um, the ending result of an MRF is um, high-density bailed materials, which are indicated right here. Those will be uh, ready for sale to whoever is uh, purchasing it. And the end, uh, the end goal is to have a closed-loop uh, closed life cycle, which puts less stress in the environment, um, in the sense that you're avoiding entering landfills and avoiding the needs for virgin resources. Uh, a closed-loop life cycle, which is generally displayed right here, uh, essentially means when you purchase a good, you use it for its end of life, and you dispose of it, instead of having it enter a landfill, it'll be reprocessed into a new product and then once again purchased. Um, my client, Mr. Bates, proposes an MRF at the Shenandoah landfill. Um, it'll require the construction of a 40,000 square foot building, which is just southeast of the current recycling building, right here. You can see it's proximity to 81, and this is the current landfill. It'll be a dual stream, build, uh, dual stream handling of 150 tons per day. The first stream will be consisting of uh, separation, and the second stream will be uh, uh, waste reduction. It's also important to know that the building and the equipment come with warranties and uh, service and training. And it's also important to know that the amount of workforce employed at the landfill is generally the same that is going to be required at the MRF. So MRF stage one, which the uh, separating, it's going to be handled by the Bolograph Van Dyke separator and balers. Um, Bolograph has 340 MRFs and 2400 sorting systems um, installed in North America, which leads the market. Uh, in addition, they have excellent support, so in the case of a malfunction, they promise a 48 hour return to operation. <coughs> uh, fortunately, uh, my client and I got to go down to Roanoke RDS, which stands for Recycling Disposal Solutions. And they are one of the only MRFs in the Southwest Virginia, and they use the Bolograph Van Dyke separating failure systems. You can see here is the first stage of separating. On the right, once again, that's the, final, uh, the finest belt material. Stream two is the waste reduction, which will be handled by the uh, Greenfield mulcher and shredders in order to reduce the amount of volume entering the landfill. So the way the landfill currently works now, they just put their waste into the open cell, and they have a bulldozer drive over it a couple of times to uh, reduce the amount of volume that's being taken up. So we suppose, we, um, suppose that, uh, we suggest that you shred them, which will completely reduce the volume so that way when you have larger objects such as a desk or a mattress, um, not only will the volume be smaller, but you could extract uh, precious metals like springs, nails, screws uh, with magnets and those could later be sold. Uh, in addition, a Greenfield Rockster will be rented to crush rocks at the landfill. There are currently rocks at the landfill that have just been sitting there, and those will yield a supply of gravel to uh, improve the county roads. Uh, my client and I, Mr. Bates, had the opportunity to go to a live demo of these rocksters, where they crush large rocks, uh, giving us a supply of gravel. In addition, they crush large construction debris, where once again there's gravel, and they extracted any rebar or anything else that was in the, uh, in the debris. And the rocks engineers are knowledgeable and they have excellent support. In addition, there's a county board member uh, present at the demo. So in order to implement this, there's some public policy we have to get through. Uh, an MRF underneath the Virginia Administrative Code is allowed to operate under a permit by rule. A permit by rule, um, in order to get to receive a permit by rule, you need to have proper documentation and evidence of public participation. So the required documentation starts with notice of intent to operate. So this basically states where you're gonna be and what you plan to do. After that, you have a siting plan. Once again, it's where you're gonna be and it, uh, we have to ensure that you're within property boundaries, you're not in flood zones, um, there are access roads that could bear the weight of any loads that you're carrying in and out. You have to have a management plan, so how you plan to run the facility, in addition to um, how you're gonna keep track of records and having an operation, operations manual. And then an engineer's approval, so you've got to have a new building and new machinery. There has to be an engineer to come through to make sure everything is um, up to par. And then closure and responsibility after operation. This basically outlines how you plan to close it, um, who's going to be responsible for it, and how much is it going to cost to close. And then business operation and financial responsibility. 
So since it's going to be run by the county, there's no need to get the SEC involved, but you also you have to outline who's going to be financially responsible. And then finally, an air emissions permit because there's going to be large machinery uh, releasing carbon dioxide and other harmful pollutants. So with uh, proper documentation complete, you have to go through public participation, which states that uh, once a week for two consecutive weeks, you have to have a public notice, which basically says what you're going to do, where is it going to be, who's going to be affected. In the, uh, public, in the publication in the newspaper, you also have to include a public hearing. So this is a time and a place for individuals in the county to come by and ask questions, um, whatever they have. In addition to that, they need to have a 30-day comment period where, once again, the public can ca uh, call up a number and ask any questions. So with the public participation and the proper documentation uh, complete, the department will undergo a completeness review and they will um, respond to you within 30 days regarding the status of the permit. So funding is uh, very important for these projects. They are large, uh, large initial investments of funding, absolutely important. Um, our project is eligible under the uh, Virginia Saves. Virginia Saves program is sponsored by the Department of Mines, Minerals, and Energy Depart uh, Division of Energy. And they are looking to uh, finance projects involved with energy conservation, efficiency, and renewable projects. So hopefully with the success of funding, we will receive a low interest subsidized loan from Virginia Saves. And it's important to know that the project is in the process of uh, going through the funding. So before you implement any large scale uh, operation like this, you have to make sure there is a market and there will be a market. So the recycling market uh, is global, but depends on commodity markets, which often vary monthly. And you can see on the left, we have uh, this table. We have uh, various materials at their dollars per ton FOB for two months. FOB stands for the bailed material, like the images I showed you before. They're essentially the big cubes of material. Um, these were given to us by Dave's Recycling, which is here in Harrisonburg, approximately 40 uh, minutes south of the Shenandoah landfill. And Dave's Recycling is uh, ready to accept our materials tomorrow. We have to look at the market trends as well. So this graph indicates uh, recovered fiber prices for Southeast United States from late 1990s to 2009. Um, they generally increase up until about 2008, and then fall with the financial crisis uh, of 2008. And it's important to know that the trends of the recycling um, market <coughs> follows the trends of the uh, United States market. Unfortunately, data from 2009 to 2011 um, wasn't easily accessible. <coughs> so here we have the last five years data. Once again, for recovered fiber prices, uh, these happen to be in North Carolina. It's important to know that the market lows in 2009 have not been met in any category, and the market highs um, have been reached on several different occasions. Also, uh, there's been an increase from two, uh, 2016 to 2017. So uh, capital costs for establishing MRF, like I said, are rather large. Uh, the cost will vary on the size of the facility and the technology. The larger the facility and the higher the technology, the lower it is uh, per ton to operate. And the average MRF uh, capital cost was 5.4 million in 2006, which is about 6.5 million in 2017. On this table here, we have the uh, outlining the costs of the MRF, so we have enough to um, construct a new building, then we have enough for the uh, machinery here, and at the bottom we have um, logistics and vehicles and trailers that we might have to purchase for moving the materials around, um, as per my client's research. So the county currently has tipping fees, which is essentially a cost to dispose of your waste. <coughs> they depend on material in their respective units. It's uh, usually tons, but for some of them it's by unit, such as tires, uh, and vehicle and or volume, you have cubic yards and bobcat scoops. Um, they, they stay rarely steady and uh, it's important to know that there is no fee to recycle. But uh, most importantly, the daily revenue depends on what, what is being, uh, I guess, disposed of every day. So that's a large variable in uh, conducting the costs of the revenue. So projected cash flow, um, using how much we get per day, you multiply that by how much you're going to sell it for, 
And so you have um, dollars per day, you multiply that by the days in the year, and then you have your annual revenue. Um, you add up, the, you sum the annual revenues for each material, and you end up with your total annual, annual revenue. Uh, applying these equations, you get the following. So in the second column, these are the tons received per day in September. Um, they, uh, they mirror the averages for Virginia tons per day, so they are uh, accurate numbers. In addition, uh, the third, third column here is dollars per ton. These are the numbers that you saw previously, um, courtesy of Dave's Recycling. Then you have revenue per day, uh, rev uh, annual revenue, and you sum it up to get approximately $3.7 million. So using a simple projected payback period, you can, uh, simple projected payback period, which is initial investment over the annual cash inflow. So initial investments, about $9 million. The um, annual cash flow is the revenue minus the operation of maintenance costs, and the, which is $3.6 million uh, minus the operation of maintenance costs of $2.5 million, which is based on a 2006 survey conducted by the government uh, advisory associates. So you end up with 7.76 years before interest, taxes, and depreciation. So being that number is before interest, taxes, and depreciation, uh, you'd, like, you'd like to extrapolate a little bit. So playing it safe, a payback period of nine years is a reasonable payback period considering large investment uh, projects usually have longer payback periods. And the uh, investment in this MRF will uh, eliminate the cost of landfill expansion every five or 10 years. If a uh, payback period is nine years, uh, you gotta think that's basically one uh, landfill expansion and you have your money, you have a return on your investment. It will eliminate potential for hazardous pollutants. It will reduce the volume of input to the landfill because the landfill will still be there, but with the uh, recycling separation and sorting, in addition to the uh, shredding, you will greatly reduce the amount of input to the landfill reduce the need for virgin resources, like I mentioned earlier, that's the, uh, life si the com closed life cycle, and most importantly, you create a more sustainable envi environment for future generations. <coughs> there are also some future considerations. So with the construction of this new building, you could add solar panels. Uh, having solar panels will be used to operate the machinery, which will lower the operation and maintenance costs, um, which in the end will reduce your, your payback period. Um, also, Shenandoah County population has increased 20% from 2000 to 2010, which uh, in the event of just only having a landfill, that could put stress on the landfill because there's a lot more waste coming in, and it also might reduce the uh, life expectancy of their landfills. Um, in the event of implementing an MRF, uh, population increase is a good thing because you have more waste coming through, and the more waste coming through will reduce the uh, amount, to pr the cost to operate per ton which in the end will reduce your payback period. And finally, the addition of a waste to energy facility, which according to the EPA's uh, solid waste management hierarchy is favored before landfilling, would create a zero waste energy producing facility, which um, if the solar panels aren't enough to operate the facility, that energy can be used once again to operate the facility or it could be exported. So the main, one of the main challenges is getting the Shenandoah County uh, Board of Supervisors support. We have support from one of them. We've been in contact and he likes the idea of the project, but we haven't had as much success with the others. Like I mentioned earlier, the permitting process, that's a, a challenge that we have to get over. Uh, funding is a huge one because if we don't get the funding for the project, um, there's very little chance that the project will uh, be implemented. And then finally, public education for trash separation. So there will be a change in the way that the uh, public is disposing of their trash. So it's going to be um, a dry, dry trash, which is just like, which includes recyclables. Then you have your wet trash, which is yard clippings, food scraps. So in conclusion, the EPA's uh, solid waste management hierarchy has landfilling as the least desired method. Um, just because we have the land doesn't mean that we should um, landfill. And MRF should be implemented in areas where they're economically feasible and have public support. <coughs> MRFs reduce the potential for harmful pollution, pollutants, uh, the need for virgin resources, and uh, expansion of landfills, in addition to creating a more sustainable future. Uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Nash for all the help that she's uh, guided me through this project. 
Um, Daryl Bates, my client, unfortunately he couldn't be here. I'd like to thank him for allowing me to work on this project with him, in addition to some resources he gave me. Uh, I'd like to thank Lee Harvey. Um, after my first project fell through, he put me in touch with Daryl Bates, so without him, I wouldn't be standing up here right now. And of course, uh, Katie Martin, who is our contact at uh, Roanoke Disposal Solutions. Here's some of my references. Questions? Current practice for the Shenandoah County, uh, how do they deal with their uh, trash or waste? How do they deal with it? It's all going into the landfill, uh, with exception of the individuals who go and recycle their um, materials. So all the recycle will be that their individuals, they just send it to different places? Yeah, well, it relies on the individual to go to these locations to recycle, so the people who don't recycle, they'll just throw it in with their trash and that'll be put to the landfill. But what do they do with the recycling once Shenandoah County gathers it at these 15 different locations? Where oh, they, they collect it in one area and then they send it out. So, so they are selling they, they, it? They are selling it, but it's not as high as it could be. Does that answer your question? Yeah, do you know where, 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 where they send it to? I do not know where they're selling, uh, sending it to. Uh, another question is, uh, what, uh, what is the capacity for the you know, proposed MRL? Uh, 150 times per day. 150 tons per year? Day. Oh, days per year. Days, days per day. Yeah, ton, tons per day. 150 tons per day. Is that what they're pulling down in Roanoke? Currently? They're pulling more. They have a larger system as well. Oh, they have a bigger system. Uh, what's your projected um, amount of funding? That, what's the range of funding that you could receive from that um, the Virginia? Uh, it does say they, they will fund up to $9 million. So it is max. Uh, good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. After you. And so look at the number. It is 150 tons per day capacity. Um, so the San Diego County, they actually have 165 60. tons, 165 tons 165, per day, right? Yeah. Um, 45% of them are MS, MSW. Mm -hmm. So that is 70, 74 tons per day. That is actually the MSW. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they, receive, they are receiving 165 tons yeah. at, at the at county. county. That's total. That includes the 45s of uh, municipal solid waste, the cut construction debris, and the 10% of the yard cleanings. Yeah, I think a lot of time it's the capacity that matters when you establish a new you know, facility. Uh -huh. So you have enough trash or the waste that coming in so that it keep, you know, keep running as a, for, for long, long, long term. Uh, but if it is, you know, if the, 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 the economy or populations keep growing, of course the waste will be, keep, keep growing. That probably can justify the, the, uh, this, this necessary to build one there. I was just wondering um, whether there were any residential areas near the landfill on the proposed um, new site uh, that you were discussing in your presentation, um, and what needs to be considered in terms of you know, kind of zoning and thinking about like how close can people actually be living uh, to in these facilities to the new MRF. Yeah, and I was also wondering about noise pollution. Um, to what extent do these facilities? contribute to any type of noise pollution? So, well, there, there is noise pollution. Um, I can go back. It is, it's located on the, the Shenandoah landfill area or, uh, property already. So, and it's right next to 81. So I don't think noise pollution is a large concern. Um, There's hardly anybody who lives around it. Yeah, and yeah. It did, like, so there also isn't um, curbside pickup. That's why there's those locations where people have to dispose their garbage. So it isn't, um, as it's not extremely residential. Yeah, so this is the current recycling uh, facility, 81, and this is the approximate area of where it's going to be, and this is the landfill in which they're currently open. Does that answer your question? Yeah. That is part of the permitting process, though, right? Mm -hmm. The whole yeah. siting location. Yeah, and, yeah. And, if it, and if there was a huge concern with the noise, uh, I'm sure the public uh, hearings, they would. 
be heard. Any other questions?